So good afternoon. My name is Tony Radikin. I'm the first Sea Lord and Chief of Naval Staff. And I've been asked to say a few words about my background. I'm the first Sea Lord at the moment, just over six months in. Previous to that, I was the second Sea Lord. But my longer term background is I'm a warfare officer. So I came up through the Navy as a navigator, then became a principal warfare officer, and then went into the command sphere. And I've had various sea commands and then also formation commands. So commanded in Iraq several times, and that's working at the top end of the Gulf, the northern end of the Gulf, with our allies and working very closely with the Americans. And my other feature in my background is I describe myself as being reasonably joint and reasonably defence. So I've had several posts in the Ministry of Defence working across defence rather than just the Navy. And I was very pleased to be Chief of Staff of our Joint Forces Command, now called our Strategic Command, where I had responsibility for our overseas bases. I was the head of personnel. I was in charge of infrastructure, as well as being the Chief of Staff to a four-star general. But my job now is as the First Sea Lord. I'm delighted with where the Navy is. We're busy on operations. We're being invested in as a Navy. And we're looking to shift that Navy so that it makes the most of that investment and we set ourselves for the future. And in some ways, that's a similar expression of, and in particular, the Indian Ocean. And one of the issues that I'm being asked to speak about is, is the Indian Ocean and this area an expression of the community of nations? Is it a strategic construct? Or is it just a hub where the waterway is where nations interact and they come together. And I think, unsurprisingly, to me, it's all three of those. This is an amazing part of the world and it's growing in importance. And for the UK, I'm here really demonstrating that we have a role, we think, in this region. That's a historic role and it's a current role. And so you see that when, if we go up to the uh, correction, northwest end of the Indian Ocean and you go into the Gulf, and for the UK defence, we have eight ships at the moment inside the Gulf. We've just opened a new naval base at Bahrain, and we have an amazing um, relationship with a whole series of allies in that region, and we're part of a much wider coalition. If I then come down into the central part of the Indian Ocean, we have the British Indian Ocean Territories, Diego Garcia. And again, an important strategic outpost where we work with allies to have a, a, a foothold in this region and to be able to contribute to peace and security and stability in the region. And then if I go further east, then we start to see a UK footprint, whether that's in Brunei or Singapore, and then our other allies and friends in the rest of the Indo-Pacific region. And then if I come back, I think really today is about acknowledging that this amazing region with this amazing ocean is fundamental to all of our futures. So again, that's that, that question that's being posed, is this merely just connectivity or an expression of a strategic construct or is it a community of nations? And unsurprisingly, as a naval officer, the reason why I value this conversation and it being centered around this amazing ocean is because it allows us to understand better what the oceans and the high seas give us when we express them as a global commons. And to me, this is really fundamental because we have been the beneficiaries by virtue of a Dutch legal philosopher called Grotius, who in the 1600s managed to codify what we know today to be an amazing legal construct called the high seas, which means that we can all use the high seas and states are limited in terms of it being fundamentally their territory out to 12 nautical miles and maybe some additional rules out further as part of an exclusive economic zone. But what Grotius managed to achieve was to allow a global commons to emerge, 
And that to me is a fundamental part of what we understand to be our prosperity today, our security and our shared endeavors. And there is an, an Indian Admiral who was the chief of the Indian Navy a few years ago called Admiral Mehta, who came out with a wonderful phrase that in a globalized world, we are all maritime nations because we all rely so much on the trade that happens on the high seas. And these days, looking into the future, we are going to be even more reliant on the high seas. And we are incredibly reliant on the cables that take our data around the world. So sailors regularly trot out the phrase that over 95% of the world's trade is achieved by ships on the high seas. To me, the more important statistic is that over 95% of the world's data goes around the world in undersea cables. So the high seas and the Indian Ocean and the way that we interact as nations is more important than ever. And that's why I'm delighted to be here representing the UK and what we see as being our role in this important region and our understanding that we've always had a role here and we will continue to have a role and we will continue as the, as the world's economy tends to shift further to the east, we will look to have a greater part to play both in this region and the Indo-Pacific. And so really this is an expression in some ways that we have a shared past, but more importantly, it's an expression that we see that we have a shared future together in an exciting world and where we have shared challenges and those might be of piracy, the high seas being used for nefarious activities, the need to reinforce a rules-based international system and that is the way that we will both have improved prosperity but also security and shared endeavours.